Very good evening to all of you. Welcome to today's uh, YouTube live session with me, Surjit uh, Kakar. Uh, today we will be continuing with our options uh, lessons. We are on lesson number 29. In case you have not gone through the previous lessons, then the link to the playlist is available in the description. I am doing uh, the free options course in both the languages, English as well as in Hindi. So whatever language you're comfortable with, uh, both the playlist link is in the description. You can start from lesson number one. So today, today like I said, we are on lesson number 29 and we will be covering short stra straddles today, right? We have already covered short strangles. Today we'll be understanding what are straddles. Now before we start with straddles, uh, let's get done with the basic formalities. So make sure you people go through the disclosure which talks about the representation, risk disclosure, risk and all in the market and about the copyrights. And uh, yes, uh, before we, we move ahead, I would also like to add if you're liking these sessions, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, do subscribe to my channel. And uh, yes, even if you want to share the link uh, to the videos or to the playlist with your friends with your family feel free to do that if you're on some trading groups you can also share there because like i said it's an absolutely free course and anyone can join in and start learning options all right so, so today uh, we are on lesson number 29 we will be covering short straddles today now we already completed with our directional trading where we covered you know section one two three four five what different strategies we should be applying now since we are done with the uh, directional trading the next step was to get into non-direct trading because option is the only asset class where you can even plan trades which are not directional so in case prices they remain range bound within a range you're expecting you can still make money out of it so that is called as non-directional trading so in the last lesson I, I touched upon it so today also let's just be briefly touch upon it so let's say I have an area of supply and I have an area of demand and what I'm expecting is that until expiry prices would remain within this range because from supply I'm expecting the prices they hit the supply can go down if it hits this demand prices can move up so if my um, outlook is that by expiry uh, the prices can remain within this range that is where we now start planning non-directional trades now I plan my trades based on demand and supply so that is why I'm giving you example with demand supply strategy if you are planning let's say support resistance this could be your support area this could be resistance area if you're using some Fibonacci levels these can be your Fibonacci levels right so whatever your strategy might be you can use your strategy as long as you're expecting prices to remain range bound and that is what non-directional trading is all about so yes uh, options can be used to profit from lack of script move or when it is expected to remain range bound picking range is done through the proper application of uh, demand and supply methodology that is what i use like i already said whatever strategy you, you are using uh, the same strategy can be applied right all you're doing is you're just uh, replacing demand and supply with whatever your strategy might be which i just give you a few examples can be as simple as support resistance it can be some uh, fib levels whatever it might be now we use options contracts as a substitute for shares and apply option strategy when the script is expected to remain range bound between demand and supply zones using the stock price to uh, time the options play right so based on the underlying we are planning our trades so we are not planning our trades using the options premium chart always remember the trades are always planned using the underlying so uh, in the non-directional strategies uh, what all strategies we will be covering uh, we have already covered short strangle right so this is something we already already done with so we did this in the previous session today we will be doing short straddle uh, as we move forward we'll be getting into iron condor and butterflies so like i said the last time you will see iron condor is just a modified version of short strangle and the iron butterfly would be a modified version of a short straddle straddle right so basically these are just modified version of uh, short strangle and short straddle and yes we'll also be covering horizontal spread as we move ahead so one of them is already done today we will be getting done with short straddle as well all right so short straddle this strategy creates a credit net seller and is used when iv is very inflated which means iv is in section 5 so the volatility implication would be that whenever you are applying short straddle we ideally want that implied volatility should be in section 5. I'll say even if it is in uh, section 4 acceptable, but ideally we would like it to be in section 5 because we are selling options and uh, we would love to sell options when they are very inflated. And the biggest challenge with the uh, short strangles and short straddles is that they have unlimited risk characteristic, right? So we would only like to apply it when we already understand that the implied volatility is very inflated because when it is very inflated, the deflation can also help us make some money on it right so that is why section 5 would be the ideal condition to do it 
All right. So, like I said, this strategy creates net credit, and ideally, we would only apply it when we are in section five. Yes. Now, talking about how do I get to know whether I'm in section one, section two, three, or five? Uh, for this, I uh, did cover in some of the lessons what is historical volatility, what is implied volatility, and then how do we compare the two to understand what section is the IV in as of now? And for this, I have also created some custom-built indicators. So, if you have not gone through lesson number. 27 uh, make sure you go through lesson number 27 because that is where i made these indicators absolutely free for anyone who wants to use it so in lesson number 27 i have given you the complete steps how you can get access to that indicator absolutely free and you can use those indicators to understand in uh, which section is the implied volatility as of now now application would be uh, we have expectation of price remaining range bound between our uh, demand and supply zone still expiry and that is the reason we are applying it uh, here one thing which i'll also add is as we move forward you will see whenever you are applying short straddle uh, you make the maximum profit or you collect the maximum premium if your expiry is close to the midpoint so along with this yes we have an expectation that it can remain range bound uh, the more you are expecting it to expire some somewhere in between uh, the middle of the range uh, the the more the money you will be making so as we move forward as we look at the uh, payoff diagram you'll understand what i mean by this all right so yes this strategy should be used when iv is in section 5 because uh, in this strategy uh, the risk is unlimited and uh, that is where we would we don't want even implied volatility volatility to go against us uh, like i was already saying as we move forward we will be looking into modified versions of this uh, so the modified version of short uh, straddle will be the iron butterfly where we will be adding some offset units to make it as a, a limited risk characteristic but as of today we are more focusing on what a short straddle is all about so after reaching very inflated there is a potential for iv to deflate so if you remember i guess it was lesson 27 uh, we talked about that uh, volatility is more like a pendulum right so that's your uh, let me try to draw it a little straight so that's your fair price that's let's say your cheap price and that's let's imagine as your inflated price so when implied volatility is very inflated right probably people are panicking the world is about to end what they realize eventually the world does not end and when they realize the world is not ending that inflated price starts getting back to the fair price similarly when the underlying is not moving or the script is not moving people are uh, not panicking in a way right they are very calm but as soon as things they start picking up pace or let's say some news comes out and things they start moving then from that uh, period of calm they start getting into that panic mode right so which is where again prices will start inflating towards first the mean price and maybe from the mean price or the fair price it might even go to very inflated so this is how uh the volatility works it's more like a pendulum uh from uh, fair price it tends i'm not the fair price from deflated it tends to move to the fair price and similarly from very inflated it trends it tends to move towards the deflated so that is where we also want to take advantage of it that when iv is in section 5 we understand that as if now uh, the options are very inflated which means very expensive and the options can deflate so the premium can the implied volatility can deflate which can reduce the the uh, premium amount and that is why we would like to uh, sell it at an expensive price as of now because if it starts deflating it's going to make me some money all right so what are the characteristics of a short straddle uh, the characteristics would be risk will be unlimited uh, reward will be limited limited to whatever premium you have collected you cannot have more than uh, profit right more than whatever premium you have collected you cannot have more profit and if you talk about the break even uh, because in this case you will see your call and put both of them they have the same strike price right so uh, from that same strike price you add your premium that is going to be your one uh, break even point and you subtract the premium that is going to be the, the other premium the other break even point and uh, yes if you talk about delta this is a delta neutral strategy why because we are not trying to make money from the direction we are trying to make money from deflation of vega that is why it is a uh, vega negative and we are also trying to make money uh, which by default happens because whenever you are selling option time becomes as your friend so this is also theta positive so just by keeping the position overnight you you are getting paid by theta so the theta is paying you and in case the uh, the vega starts deflating the vega is also going to pay you the direction will not have a lot of impact the reason being because it is going to be delta neutral now if you talk about the payoff graph uh, the payoff graph or diagram would be something like this so 
here you can see if the prices that start moving down so this is your script price so price is moving down and this direction prices are increasing so you do have a range within that range yes you're making money but if the prices they start going beyond your demand area or beyond your supply area then your risk is unlimited because now it can keep going lower and lower and your risk you know you just keep having more and more loss similarly if the prices they uh, they violate your supply zone and keep going higher and higher you keep losing on money onto it so there is no big challenge with that why because by default we are always using a stop loss right so that stop loss basically makes your unlimited risk characteristic as limited but yes we do have that possibility of a gap up or a gap down against us uh, which is where you can have a loss which is bigger than what you were you know willing to take on that trade so that is why we are also calling it as an uh, unlimited risk characteristic so this is how it is but one key point which you can see here how a straddle is different from a strangle so when we did the strangle if you remember for the strangle the payoff graph was something like this right so what was happening for a strangle we had a pretty big range if the price was remaining in that range we were having the maximum profit but here you don't have a range here you have one single price point at that one single price point you will be making the maximum profit but yes if it starts going below that price point or starts going above that price point your profit starts reducing so this is one of the difference between the strangle and a straddle strangle gives you a big enough range in which you can have the maximum profit but in straddle uh, that you don't have a ray i mean you do have a range but within that range the profit starts declining right so if it starts moving down the profit starts declining if it starts moving up again the profit starts declining and uh, this is why I was talking about then when we are applying this strategy, you know, if you are having that expectation that prices can expire in the middle of that range, can you see that is going to be the middle of the range? Uh, that is where I'll be having the maximum profit. But yes, even if it goes down a little bit or if it goes up a little bit, you can still make some money on this. All right. So now, uh, uh, how do we, how do we, uh, uh, you know, plan a straddle? Uh, let's look into it. So first thing we need to have a demand zone or a supply zone as a demand and supply trader. If you are using support resistance, this could be your support area. This could be your resistance area. Now what we do is uh, once we know our area of demand and our area of supply and mind it, both these areas, they have to be high quality, high probability because they should not get violated till expiry. We want prices to remain range bound and we are also ideally looking for prices to expire closer to the middle of the curve we don't want it to expire away from the middle uh, middle uh, we want it to expire somewhere in between the more closer we are to that middle the uh, the more the profit we will be making on this one so what do we do uh, whenever we want to apply this strategy now in in uh, uh, strangle what we were doing was be the prices anywhere right we could uh, you know sell the call we could sell the put right but in this case what we would like to do is when the prices are almost in the middle of the range right so when the prices are in the middle of this range that is the time we would like to apply it so now i do understand you know uh, this would be a very common question then why only in the middle why can't i sell you know uh, sell the options when we are here why can't we sell the options why we are here so as i move to the end of the uh, session i will be covering that why do we only apply it when the prices are in the middle because that is where we have the highest advantage uh, but yes what we do is when the prices are almost in the middle that is the time we will be selling and add the money call and add the money put now this is one of the biggest difference in a short strangle and a short straddle what we were doing in a strangle was in a strangle we were selling out of the money call and we were selling out of the money put so if you remember from the very first day we have been talking about whenever we sell options we would like to sell something which is smoke which is uh, only the uh, the time value does not have any intrinsic value but here what we do is we sell at the money now at the money yes at times it might have a little bit of intrinsic value uh, but uh, you know but uh, at times it might not but what is going to happen is if call is not having intrinsic then put might have some intrinsic value if the put is not having an intrinsic value then the call will definitely have some intrinsic value might be a very small intrinsic value but this is the only case where we are selling at the money 
so what is the advantage now if you look into it uh, can you see when i'm uh, planning a, a, a strangle in a strangle i'm selling out of the money call and i'm selling out of the money put and we understand that if the options are out of the money the premium would be smaller so here we will be collecting more premium versus what we will be collecting in a in a, a strangle so strangle will always give you lesser premium compared to a straddle but the downside is in strangle we at least have a bigger range if the prices are remaining in that bigger range yes we are making that complete amount but in straddle what is happening is now we don't have a bigger range we just have one price point where our profit would be the maximum profit so can you see yes even though we are collecting more premium uh, we need to expire closer to the middle to have that maximum benefit right so that's the difference between the two plus uh, another thing which i'll also add here is that when we were doing uh, the uh, strangle uh, in strangle uh, let's say you have 20 days to expiry you have 15 days to expiry you don't have to be very right where the option might be expiring because as long as it is in that range you're still making money on it uh, so a straddle is a strategy which if you have let's say 20 days or 15 days would not be a good strategy to apply because 20 days before uh, identifying where the expiry exactly might be can be a little bit challenging so this would be much more fruitful when let's say you have two or three days to expiry because when you are just two three days away from the expiry it is much more easier for you to probably understand where the expiry might be versus when it is 20 days and when you have few days to expiry again out of the money would have already lost a lot of value so it doesn't make sense going for out of out of the money options because they will anyhow be trading at very very small premium but at the money would still have much higher premium versus the out of the money right so that is why a uh, straddle uh, is you uh, should be applied when you are closer to expiry and uh, that is where you also get the maximum benefit because you're selling uh, at the money calls and you're selling uh, at the money puts so what is our action the trade action is we sell at the money call which is our anchor unit and along with that we also sell at the money put which is also our anchor unit and when the current market price is in the center of the range so we only want to create this position when my current CMP current market price is also in the middle of the range and yes I have been saying over and over again the current and market price should be in the middle of the range when you are applying the strategy reason behind it i'll just discuss as we move ahead with few slides again parameters the closer we are to expiry the better it is for us now even though i have said 60 days ideally i wouldn't like to use when you have 30 days or 60 days because now uh, you know finding where the prices can be at expiry would it be exactly at the middle or maybe closer to the middle can be a little bit challenging so here i would probably say when you have um, let's say two three days or four five days to expiry that would be a good time but yes if you want to be a little bit more aggressive you still want to try it out that's your choice but yes ideally whenever we are selling options like you always say uh, the closer we are to expiry the better it is for us now the anchor unit uh, because we'll, we are having two anchor units both of them will be at the money when the current market price in the center of the demand zone and the supply zone so if this is my supply this is my demand we'll find the center and uh, when the current market price is here we will be taking the at the money options so how do we maintain this maintenance is in case uh, the stop loss gets hit be that for the demand or the supply we close the position uh, if any of the short units they start trading uh, with, a, with a premium which is uh, less than 10% of what you collected you can close the position and if implied volatility changes its section we can also evolve it now let's understand this with an example so let's say i have a supply zone which is as which is at 15000 uh, i mean the stop loss uh, the distal line is 15106 and similarly you can see for my demand zone the stop loss is 13637 so this is what we first need we need to have a quality demand zone we need to have a quality supply zone plus my implied volatility should be in section 5 so i have a quality demand area let's assume I have a quality supply area and my implied volatility is in section 5 so how do I apply it I will do 15,106 plus 13,637 divided by 2 I'll get my uh, center price and then we will be choosing a strike uh, which is closer to that center price now in this example you can visually see it is going to be somewhere around 14,400 so we sell the 14,400 call and we sell the 14,400 put now what you need to remember is in the next slide when I'm showing you the Greeks 
I have made the calculation as if now, and as if now the current market price is not at fourteen thousand four hundred, right? So you can see when this was created, the current market price was somewhere around fourteen thousand seven hundred and seventy. So that is where you will see that some of these Greeks will not show us what we actually want to see because currently we are not in that position. But other Greeks will be able to understand. So can you see when you do something like this, what happens? It is showing you your delta is point three five, which means you have thirty five percent participation. But I was talking about this is delta neutral so why is my delta showing me 35% participation because currently the market price is 14800 right 700 something so let's call it as 14800 because of what is happening is my call currently is in the money and can you see that is why this is having 67% participation but when i will be at the at the money because when the prices they move down and we the current market price would also be closer to 14400 then what happens at the money they always have a, a delta which is 0.5 so what is going to happen this will become 0.5 and this will also become 0.5 right or it could be maybe a, a few a per, few pesos here and there but we will then be uh, almost as good as zero right it's just that currently it is showing you 35% participation because currently my call is in the money and you can see we have around say a 67% participation from that call so that is why uh, don't uh, bother with this because you know when i created this example since the current market price is not in the middle uh, delta is not giving you the correct uh, picture but yes if you talk about theta you can see the theta is uh, definitely going to pay you because whenever you're selling options theta is your friend so you can see you get paid around 11 rupees uh, per day right and similarly if you talk about vega this is vega negative and you can see here the vega if we have 1% change in vega it's going to pay you around 30 rupees so now if i Uh, look at the PNL uh, graph or the payoff chart. This is what you can see that whatever premium you collected. So in this case, your premium would be 565 plus uh, 194, uh, which is somewhere around 700 something. So what is going to happen? Whatever is my strike price, right? My strike price was 14,400 minus 700. So you can see on the lower side, your 13,641 is the break-even point, and on the higher side, 15,159 is your break-even point. So these are your two break-even points, and like i said you know if you expire exactly at the strike price you get the maximum profit but yes in case prices they start moving down uh, you lose a little bit of i mean you get lesser premium to yourself but yes that is how it is uh, that in a in a in a straddle you don't have a very big range uh, you do have a range but within that range your profitability also starts declining and yes if it goes beyond that you can see it's unlimited loss it goes beyond that you can see it is unlimited loss now just to show you an example Uh, because currently the prices were close to fourteen thousand eight hundred, so you can see if we were at the money, then you can see your deltas are almost a point five point five, and now you can see I'm delta neutral. So I just took it as a screenshot just to show you that whenever you will be applying this strategy, where you will be at the money, so when you will be at the money. your drill delta is almost zero you can see uh, that your delta neutral but the vega is still pay, paying you and the theta is still paying you right vega and theta can still pay you so this i just took as an example so now coming back to uh, why do we want to select the uh, strike price which is in the center now in this example our center price was 14400 so you can see we are 14400 call 14400 put we are short that and if we talk about this now you look at your break even points your break even points are 13641 and fifteen thousand one fifty nine. Now, if I plot these break even points on the chart, what you can see is my break even point is below my demand area. That is what I would actually love to have because from demand I can expect prices to move up. Similarly, if you look at your upper break even point, that is above my supply zone. You can see fifteen thousand one fifty seven and thirteen thousand six forty three. So these lines and reds are my break even points. So when I'm selecting the center strike you can see my break even points are at a very good location they are beyond my supply they are beyond my demand that is what i ideally want because from supply we are expecting prices to move up from demand we are expecting prices to uh, sorry from supply we are expecting prices to move down and from demand we are expecting prices to move up so that is why our break even points should be beyond these demand areas and should be beyond these supply areas but let's assume for a minute i uh, enter this strategy at the current market price because i know i have that range and i don't wait for prices to come to the middle and i uh 
apply this strategy uh, as if today uh, choosing the strikes which are at the money and here you can see the at the money strike will be 14,800 now if I do something like this what happens to your break even points can you see this becomes 14,123 and this becomes 15,477 uh, now if you plot these break even points on your chart so what you can see is that now my lower break even point is even above my demand area so what is happening by the time prices they reach my demand I am already making loss on this trade and why would I like to do that because from demand we are expecting price to move up so my break even point should always be below the demand area so this is why we only apply this strategy when the prices will come almost at the center and at that center we will be selling the add the money call and add the money put because if we do it as if now by doing as if now you can see my break even lower break even point has now entered inside of the range and we never wanted that and similarly if you look at the upper break even point that has also shifted above right uh, we are only expecting prices to move down from here in case prices to go above this we anyhow are willing to close our trade so why do we want our break even point to be really really far away so this is the challenge that you can cannot open or apply this strategy when prices are anywhere in this range the idle time to apply this strategy would be when the current market price is uh, near the center strike and that is where we would like to apply this strategy because that places our break-even points at a very good location so if I again go back just to show you uh, the previous chart oops you can see in the previous chart our break-even points are placed very beautifully right above the supply below the demand uh, but in this case what has happened is yes uh, the supply uh, for the supply the break-even point has shifted above anyhow doesn't give any again it doesn't give us any advantage and uh, the case with the lower break-even point is now even worse right it has gone inside of our range which we would never uh, want uh, you know we would never want to happen because our stop loss should always be below this so this is the reason why uh, uh, this strategy has to be applied when the current market price is at the center strike and that is the time we sell the add the money uh, call and the add the money put all right so that basically takes care of short straddle not a very complex strategy very simple we are uh, again expecting prices to remain range bound till expiry we want prices to come close to the middle strike and once it is close to the middle at that time we sell the call we sell the put and as long as prices they remain in this range yes you're still making money but the maximum profit will be if we are expiring closer to the strike price and uh, also i've added one thing because uh, you know estimating where the prices will be expiring if you have 15 days 20 days to expire is very challenging so an idle time to apply this strategy would be when you have just a few days left to expiry because that is where it will be easier for you to uh, maybe predict where the prices might end based on whatever strategy you're using so this is what short straddle is all about and that brings us to the end of today's session thank you so much for joining in and yes if you have any questions queries regarding whatever i'm teaching in the options course feel free to put it in the uh, comment section i try to answer all the queries i get as soon as possible and again thank you so much for joining in uh, do like the video share it with your friends share it share it with your family share it on your trading groups i'll see you again during the week where we will be covering the same strategy in hindi until then uh, enjoy your evening take care bye bye